Joining us now is Bill Rudin. He's co-chairman and CEO of Rudin Management. It is one of the largest real estate companies operating in our city. Bill, good to have you back. Well, I'm happy to be here live and in person with you guys. I was here about six months ago, so you, thanks for having you me. You were. Um, I want to start off with this juxtaposition of two things. Uh, it seems like there's an unquenchable desire of people to live in New York City. They want to pay more than they ever have, but they don't seem to want to live here for the convenience of actually being able to walk to the office. They don't go to the office. So I can't understand the two. How do you explain it? Well, first of all, the, the trend of people coming back to the office, particularly since Labor Day, but even before that, is going up. Our buildings, the Class A buildings that we own, we're, some of them are at 70, 80 percent, some of them 90 percent, Blackstone, BlackRock. Yeah, of course, financial uh, services. Financial services. I mean, you're going to keep making this argument with me, but <laughs> they're not anywhere near the occupancy were no, pre-pandemic. But, that, but that's why we... I just left a breakfast where the mayor and the governor spoke. They were together at Association for Better New York, an organization my dad started back in the 70s. First time a mayor and governor were working at this breakfast together, speaking, talking about a new vision, uh, the new New York plan, which uh, part of their 150-page uh, recommendations talks about conversions of obsolete office buildings to residential, be able to walk to work. Um, and have new mod we, we have a housing shortage, and we've proven it downtown. The proof of concept has been done in lower Manhattan. 30 years ago, there were 10,000 people living here. In the mid-90s, city and state con allowed conversions. There's 70,000 people living here. You, you, I walked from Cipriani to over here. No they, doubt. Their kids. But I still wonder, how do you in your mind, in other words, again, uh, rents have never been higher, so clearly there's demand. For whatever reason, people want to live here. But are you surprised? that so few of them seem interested in going to the office every day. Well, I think that, again, as I said before, it's, the trend is changing. We've just made a, had a huge announcement with Citadel and our partners at- I uh, want to talk to you at, about that. At, at Vernado to, to create a, a million 700,000 foot building in Midtown, two blocks away from where JP Morgan's building their new world headquarters with about 50,000 employees. And they want to have all their employees together. We just signed a lease in our building in Times Square. Pandora is moving from Baltimore, bringing 30,000 uh, square feet of space into Times Square. So we're seeing... But you own residential and you own commercial. Yes, we do. Would you rather be just residential than commercial? Do you feel like the commercial is simply going to be a more challenging environment for years to come? Well, th there's definitely challenges, but if you have the right product, you put the right infrastructure and the amenities, CEOs tell us that to get their employees back, you have to have the wellness, you have to have the food, you have to have... Uh, the you know the sustainable components. Right. So that, those are all key components to getting people back, and we're seeing people respond. Almost 30 million square feet of leases will be signed through this the end of this year. That's a pretty damn good number for you know for a tough uh, economic. You environment. mentioned the Citadel deal. Tell us a little bit more about it. I mean, it's going to be years potentially, but he wants to build a giant new. Headquarters in Midtown Manhattan? He, he's already, you know, they, they're, they just moved into a new building on Park Avenue. They have other spaces. They want to have their people together in one location. That's the driver of this. And to be able to design a building from the start and, uh, you know, put all the components in that are critical for their future, their growth in the city, which continues to seem pretty substantial. Um, I saw a report just this morning that WeWork is burning through its cash pile and there's, you know, questions. It's raising questions more broadly about the idea of shared office space in general. Given the fact that there is that weakness there that we're having this conversation about, do you think that's a type of business model that actually starts to go away now in a more meaningful way? I, I, everybody, every business is going through different cycles. I think that shared work environment is here to stay. I think it addresses some of the issues that we just talked before, where companies you know, may not want to make long-term commitments and have the ability to have flexible work environment. And they're doing what companies do when, when the economy slows down. They, they try to re reimagine themselves. I personally think that the, we work and those type of companies are here to stay. Will they be as large as they were? Probably not. Uh, and it depends on the economy. If you ask the CEO of WeWork, in Europe and other parts of the country, they're at 70, 80, 90 percent occupancy. In the United States, it's you start off the conversation about that, be, people being back to work. But that's why you have to create the right environment and uh, the culture of a company, the collaboration, the connectivity is so critical, to, I think, for companies to grow.